before about 2000, there was a lot of talk about commercial space. And there were some companies like Orbital Sciences that had made some strides. Um, but the, the new space era, which again is about 20 years old now, really begins with SpaceX. And the idea was that you would take private capital, you'd be vertically integrated. So you'd make as many of your components like rocket engines, structures, payload fairings, you'd make those in-house. So you wouldn't have to buy those from traditional suppliers. And then you would go through the development process as quickly as possible. And you might blow a few rockets up while you're testing, but that's okay because you got to the launch pad faster. Um, and, and people had talked for a long time about this really commercial approach to spaceflight, but it was space. It took SpaceX to come along and prove that it could be successful. And they really started demonstrating that by about 2010. And since that time, you know, the amount of private investment flowing into spaceflight has really started to substantially increase almost year over year. And so SpaceX was a launch company when it started out. Um, but it's now into spacecraft, you know, it, it flies humans to the International Space Station, it flies cargo, it has the Starlink internet service, it's, it's providing broadband internet from low Earth orbit. And we've actually seen that from the second generation of space companies too. Like Rocket Lab came along, they were the second private company to build a liquid fuel orbital rocket, they did it after SpaceX with the Electron. And very quickly, they started moving into spacecraft services like Photon, which is an upper stage. And they're going to use the Photon spacecraft to take very small satellites to Venus and to Mars. Um, and we've seen it with Firefly and Relativity and all these other companies that start out basically with a launch. So the SpaceX started out with the Falcon 1 and then very quickly sort of diversify into other services.